This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, and uh, well, this one is a really nice looking one, a very modern computer, and uh, well, it has a pretty big problem, it doesn't post. Ergo, it doesn't send a picture to a monitor, so we should see at least some sign of life from this rig when we attempt to turn it on. I've got my phone here because I want to read to you the specifications of this rig. Again, it's, it's practically brand new. Uh, the motherboard is an Asus Strix Z690F, the CPU is a Core i9-12900K, he's got 32 gigs of 5600 megahertz DDR5 in here, and the GPU is a Zotac Trinity RTX 3080. So yeah, she's a beefcake. Also, yes, my hair is a disaster. Let's just get that out of the way up front. I've been troubleshooting rigs all night, and uh, well, this is just, it's just what happens. Like the, this piece of hair just doesn't want to doesn't want to listen. But anyway, welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new here, pertinent info is in the video description. Just know that everything you see us do in this playlist is done free of charge. We don't charge anything at all for the troubleshooting service. We also don't charge for replacement parts. I'll do my best to replace what I can. Uh, sometimes I have to dip into my own pocket. Sometimes we have manufacturers step in and, and support us that way with products. But uh, yeah, I'm going to try my best to get this one back up and running. We'll see how much effort uh, it's gonna take. It's a shame that something this new has to be broken this early in its life. So, crossing fingers, stay with me. Exter is a leading smart wallet brand with innovative design solutions to improve the way you carry important items. Their unique card mechanism ensures ease of access to your frequent plastics, supporting up to six at a time, plus additional inside the band. Exter wallets are super compact and packed with RFID protection, meaning they're not only easy to carry, but also super safe wherever you go. Choose between premium leather models or aluminum, like we've opted for here, and include attachments like AirTags or their unique tracker cards to ensure they're never misplaced. Get up to 40% off extra wallets when you use our special offer code SALAZAR by clicking the sponsor link below. Let's jump straight into it then. First things first, like I said, we gotta power this on and attempt to replicate the issue described by the owner. That's gonna give us a, an important baseline. Uh, so that we are on the same page as the viewer first off and also kind of let us know where we need to start with our troubleshooting. It looks health- why are CP fans not spinning? Or this- Ow. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I saw the- I saw the frame at the rear and I thought those were the blades. The blades were spinning. I was not hoping it didn't damage that fan. Uh, but these fans definitely aren't spinning, so that's strange. And we have no post. By, by this point, we should have gotten something. Also trying here, connecting to the motherboard. So I'd be running off integrated graphics. Still nothing. So that's a real shame. Um, I really hope it's not the card, because there's no way on earth I can replace a 3080. I mean, even at the prices these cards are leveling at now, it's still a very expensive component that I just can't afford to continue replacing. And the very first thing I'm gonna do is try reconnecting these fans. I know that seems like a super odd thing to keep a system from posting, but I've seen weirder. A lot of Asus boards, in fact, will not post, or at least they won't let you pass the post screen without connecting a fan to the CPU header. So we'll see what we're dealing with here. You know, though, it's really weird that um, even with them connected, they turn on for a split second and then they just completely stop. I, like, I've never seen that before. Unless this is manually configured, I'm not sure why you would manually disable your CPU fan header. I mean, if you're not using them, you don't need to disable them. Uh, yeah, these fans aren't spinning at all. We also have a Dr. Debug. Uh, well, it's, not, it's not Dr. Debug, but it's a series of debug LEDs up there at the top, and none of them light up like at all. So it's not even getting past the first check. So at this point, I'm ready to start taking things out of the rig that aren't vital and we'll test as we go, piece by piece. So the first thing I wanna take out is a graphics card because even if, even if the card was fine, we should still get a picture out through the 12900K via the motherboard through its HDMI port. Now I tried that earlier when we first powered the system on, but as, if the card's connected, it's gonna try to send picture through the card. So that HDMI port will never work anyway. If we take the card out, you'll force uh, display out through the board. And uh, that's what I wanna rule out first, that this is potentially a card issue, because that is probably the worst case scenario here. And she is a, a very nice looking 3080 indeed. I really like what Zotac did with this model here. I don't see any signs of abuse. Otherwise, uh, yeah, looking pretty healthy, pretty new. Again, I don't think this Core i9 is the F SKU, so we should have integrated graphics and uh, we should get a picture out if this rig at this point was healthy. 
So it's, it's just weird. I know you can't see probably from that angle, but these two CPU cooler fans just cut out right away. That's not what they should be doing. I don't think we're gonna get anything here. Just gonna wait a bit just to be, just to cover all of our bases. I'll wait just a tad. The debug LEDs are not lit. Still. It's weird, I can hear the fans ramp down as though the rig has posted, but uh, yeah, this isn't, this isn't doing it for us. That ain't it, Chief. Again, yeah, so I just powered the system on and you'll see nothing. These fans stop and nothing here. Something should be lighting up. I wonder if there's an issue with the socket or the CPU itself, possibly just another motherboard issue. Um, who really knows? So now continuing with our rig deconstruction, we're gonna start disconnecting all of the non-pertinent cables. So things like front panel, uh, front panel wires, HD audio, USB 3, Type-C, all that stuff. We're just gonna leave the 24 pin and the eight pin EPS connected. That's it, nothing else. This should rule out any uh, incomplete wiring, maybe a short on some sort of peripheral side, maybe like there's, a, like there's actually a couple hubs back here. Maybe there's an issue with one of the hubs, right? Bypassing all of that, uh, limiting the functioning components to just the core of the platform. The RAM, the motherboard, and the CPU, along with the power supply, of course, uh, just helps us, again, narrow that scope. That's the goal. We're just trying to narrow the scope to one or two components. At that point, we can just swap one or the other and uh, we'll have our answer, hopefully. So let's, actually, I can't even push that button because I've disconnected everything. Let's trip the two power pins. Okay. Now, of course, we don't have any lights. It doesn't look like the system's on because everything else is off. can hear the power supply fan. I just don't get, I mean, what could it be now? Motherboard, how many are you betting on the motherboard? I know some of you are. CPU, other things I've already done off camera, I'll go ahead and mention, I've cleared the CMOS, of course. It's one of the first things I do when troubleshooting. Uh, I have checked his RAM seating. Now I have not checked to see if his dims are okay or if we have a dead memory channel, which might be CPU related because that memory controller is in the CPU. Um, let's see if swapping some dims fixes this. I doubt it, but it's worth a shot. I'm gonna try slotting in a single Corsair Vengeance DDR5 dim into every single slot on this board, just to, yeah, just to rule out memory. Again, it's a pretty straightforward, quick process, which is why we're tackling it first. But alas, regardless of the slot I try, I still can't get a post here, so uh, moving on then. And it doesn't look like there's anything wrong at all with his power supply. So that means we're dealing with either a motherboard or CPU issue. Surprise, surprise. Right away when I noticed the debug LEDs not lighting up, I knew we were probably headed in this direction. Uh, it's just, yeah, it looks like there's some sort of power delivery issue, possibly a screwed up socket. It's very easy to do with LGA, so let's see. So let's see what we're dealing with. Uh, first impressions, pretty darn clean. This is the underside of his CPU. It is in fact a 12900K and uh, yeah, untouched, uncleaned. It looks already pretty darn solid. Uh, there's a bit of overspray on thermal paste at the bottom there, but uh, otherwise, yeah, looks fine. And here is his main board laid out before us. Uh, again, I don't see physical Issues with this, nothing super obvious at least. I have quickly scanned over it. The socket looks fine. I'll show you a close up of that. Uh, see, I don't, I don't see any bent pins. I don't see any missing pins. There's no debris lodged in here from what I can tell. So uh, it doesn't look like something I could fix quickly if it was a physical defect. Maybe, you know, he, he bent some pins or something when installing the CP for the first time. Uh, I, I think I think it's gonna be a board problem. I'd wager the board crapping out before the CPU does. He does have two M.2s installed. Unless these are installed incorrectly though, I doubt these are the problem. Uh, we're still gonna remove them though as a variable during our testing. Oh wow, I take that back. Uh, that's three NVMEs in the same system. Uh, yeah, haven't really seen that in the playlist yet. It's a new rig, you know, he's got lots of work and stuff I imagine on here, so. Makes sense, uh, but we're still gonna remove them. A few moments later. All right, so now uh, in one last attempt, we've got everything narrowed down to just the motherboard and CPU, right? Well, I've got my own power supply here, my own graphics card, my own stick of DDR5. I, I just, 
for peace of mind's sake, want to verify that one of these two is bad, and uh, we'll use these extra components to verify which one is bad after this, assuming this doesn't post. And I don't believe it will. I'm actually curious if this chip even gets hot. So this should have powered on. And it is not warming up at all. There is virtually no power getting to this CPU. No post, nothing. No lights illuminating elsewhere on the board. See, I don't want to put another CPU in this motherboard just in case the board nuked the chip. I don't want it to also nuke one of my working Core i9s. So I'm going to put his Core i9 in a newer, uh, well not a newer, it's just gonna be a replacement Z690 motherboard. It's just so strange. I mean, this system is on right now. I know it doesn't look like it's on, but it is. I mean, fans would be spinning things you saw earlier in this video, but this is, I mean, this is room temperature. That's just insane. So now you can see from behind the desk, we've got a replacement board. This is a, what is this? An Asus uh, Maximus Hero, like extreme. It's a pretty beefy Z690 board. Uh, and then we've got our power supply here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. And then we're gonna push, this is a good sign. Those are lit up, push start. And I'm just, just gonna hold my hand over the CPU for a few seconds to see if this warms up. If it doesn't warm up, then this chip is completely, completely dead. And in fact, it is not getting hot. What on earth happened to this CPU? Zero, zero. It's completely dead. I've got to be honest, I'm a bit, I'm a bit surprised by this one. I mean, it, it's such a new chip. I mean, only a generation old, and depending on when this was manufactured, maybe a few months old as of time of filming, it's just, it's dead as a doorknob. And, um, well, that's a shame. I do, thankfully, have a few 12900Ks to replace his with, though. I want to try putting one of my known working chips into his original motherboard, We'll see if we can get a post there. So here we go then, dropping my chip in his board. And uh, let's see what happens. I'm gonna keep the camera on the motherboard so that you can uh, search for any sign of life along with me. I'm going to keep a cooler off. I'm, I'm literally just looking for any sign of life at this point, honestly, if I just get some heat coming off the chip, that's confidence enough for me to wanna put all this back together and then test, uh, test fully. So I'm gonna be watching up top here, I'm not sure if the, cables in the way, if you can see that or not. But uh, these four debug LEDs, I'm gonna be looking for those to light up and I'll be checking the heat on this new chip. So let's see, there's power and let's go ahead and jump it. There we go, oh, right away. Right away we've got signs of life and the chip is heating up as expected. I'm not gonna let it run much longer than this though. It was hung up on DRAM. But that's, uh, that's a separate issue, I think. So we're already much further along than we were before. I am confident enough to go ahead and throw this entire platform uh, back together with his original hardware and uh, try for a post. Platform going back in and getting wired up. Now the graphics card is going back in and I did notice that he's just running a pair of daisy chained eight pins uh, for supplemental power. I believe he's supposed to be running two separate 8-pin cables. It really depends on, I think, the, the gauge of the wire that the PSU manufacturer uses and a few other things, but uh, we'll let him know, to be on the safe side, that he should probably throw in a separate uh, second cable. I can't really do anything about it here because I don't have another cable set for the specific power supply. Anyway, that aside, I think everything else has been wired up. His drives are back in. Let's go ahead and give it a shot. Crossing everything I got here in hopes that this works. Let's see, power up front. There we go, looks good. All fans are spinning. RGB is working. We are getting debug LEDs. Right now it's lit for DRAM. I think it is training that memory. Okay, let's see, lights off now. Come on, give me something, give me something. That should be a boot. We've got a boot LED lit on the board. We should be getting something here. Come on. Yes! 
There it is. That is our post. And it came down to a dead 12th gen loaded Intel Core i9 CPU. What the heck? All three of his M.2s are detected. We've got the Core i9 registered and looks like uh, we just need to hop in and configure DDR5 and we'll be good to go. By the way, about two thirds of what you see in each of these videos actually makes it into the final cut. Uh, about a third of the work doesn't actually even get filmed. And I do my best to try to make up for that wherever possible in a pinned comment, especially for a video like this. I don't want people thinking that I overlook something very obvious. That has happened before and I'm sure it'll happen again, but I am of course, doing my best to uh, mitigate those mishaps, uh, not only for your sake, but for the sake of the owners of the rigs in question. Uh, I don't suspect that this is a BIOS issue with his original board because, well, for one, this chip wasn't even getting hot. And that's, um, that's usually a sign of some sort of power delivery issue or an internal issue with the chip. Uh, but also, an identical SKU did work in his board. So again, I think that rolls out the BIOS uh, issue altogether. Uh, trying in a totally separate motherboard where again, it should be natively supported, Z690, exact same symptoms. The CPU wouldn't get hot at all. Uh, tried a different power supply, uh, tried all kinds of stuff. We, we literally narrowed it down to a single stick of DDR5, the motherboard and the CPU, and still couldn't get this thing to post, let alone power on. So I'm inclined to write this one off as just a cooked chip. I might send this into Intel, depending on if I can get in contact with someone there and uh, maybe have them look at it. I'm sure they have some diagnostic tools they can hook this up into and uh, see what specifically is wrong with it. We tried multiple memory channels. I mean, just everything I could think of, but uh, usually when you see a debug code zero, zero, that means there's something fatally wrong with the chip in question. On that note, thank you so much for watching this far into this one and uh, dealing with this awkward transition period that is my hair. I'm uh, really glad that we were able to get the system back up and running again, and all it took was a new CPU at 12900K but uh, I have a few of those, so I, was, uh, I wasn't hesitant to, to give him a replacement. Um, I did ask him if his CP was in the return window. He apparently had his friend order the, like a, an identical rig to his on Amazon, and uh, this was only built like two weeks ago as of time of filming. So it's possible it, it, it does fall under the return window, but uh, I mean, that's, to me, that's the easy way out. I'd rather reach out to Intel and see if we can know a bit more about that chip, because if you return that dead chip to Amazon, they're just gonna scrap it or they're gonna do something with it that, that has nothing to do with, you know, an informative piece uh, that we're trying to put together here. So hopefully I can shed a bit more light in the future uh, onto what happened with that chip. It might just be a manufacturing defect, uh, but it does sound like it was dead on arrival which is a shame. And it's possible someone else might have completely bricked it and then sent it back to Amazon and then it was repackaged and resent. Who knows? I, I, don't, I don't really know the full story here. But uh, yeah, I mean, the gist of it is his system works again. Everything is fully functional. And uh, yeah, he can get back to gaming and working on his pretty beefy rig. With that, if you enjoyed watching this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't be shy. I'd appreciate that. Also, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. That is a huge help for us. We upload videos like these all the time. And uh, I just, I, I really think this is the bread and butter of the channel at this point. I mean, fixing computers or at least attempting to, the entertainment factor behind that, especially if I make a fool of myself on camera, I'm not afraid to do that, to show my mistakes on camera. I've done that many times before. Uh, and then, then the, the sheer informative aspects as well. I think all of that just makes for a really cool um, playlist. And so that's, that's why I wanna keep it going. If you have a broken system and you want a chance to have it fixed for free and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, I would, uh, I would strongly encourage you to submit a form linked in this video description. And uh, yeah, I'll get to you as quickly as I can. We do have a very large queue and more entries are submitted every single day. It's pretty crazy how many systems are out there with issues. Um, that said, if, it, if the issue is like intermittent spotty, like oh, well, occasionally my computer crashes, like you're gonna be pushed pretty far, to, pretty far toward the back of the line over, especially over folks who have like very chronic, you know, my system doesn't turn on at all or my system doesn't post issues. Those are the ones I like to tackle first. At least you can use your rig, kind of, sort of. These rigs you can't use at all. And uh, those are the ones I want to tackle first. So just bear that in mind when you do 
uh, if, if you do happen to submit a form there. But uh, yeah, that interest is appreciated. It allows me to continue doing what I'm doing here, as does your viewership. With that, I'm gonna get out of here. It's um, what, the day before, two days before Thanksgiving. So if you celebrate that, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, just be safe, especially if you're traveling. And for those around the world, if you're watching the World Cup, let me know who you're rooting for in the comment section. I'm, I hope it's your home country. I, I, that would be, it'd be really weird to not root for your home team. Although I will admit I have rooted for Spain in the past, uh, especially when like USA had no chance. We might have a chance this year. I don't know. The USA and soccer, football, whatever. It's, it's, it's kind of iffy, but we'll see. I'd, I'd love to see them in the quarter semis. That'd be pretty cool. So yeah, all that down below. I'll meet you there. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me. You know, I just realized by the time this video goes live, the World Cup will be over. What am I, what am I thinking? This is going to be like episode, what, 13, 14, 15, somewhere in that ballpark, and I'll just read the title. But, uh, yeah, by then, World Cup will be over. So, someone already won. A country's already won. <laughs> Who will it be?